Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, we will discuss today uh, one fresh chapter of the book we are following. This is chapter number 4. So, so far we have uh, completed chapter number 1 and chapter number 2 and as I mentioned sometimes earlier that chapter number 3 will skip. We are not skipping that actually chapter number 3 if you see your book that its title is interdependence and gain from trade right. So, that chapter actually whatever is their principles of trade and all that principle of absolute advantage and trade on the basis of that principle. Uh, this if you can remember that is uh, that principle is first proposed by Adam Smith and then principle of relative advantage or comparative advantage proposed by uh, David Ricardo and uh, trade on the basis of that principle all we have discussed quite elaborately uh, while we were discussing our 10 principle in chapter number 1 right. More specifically principle number 5 where trade can make each party better off. So, whatever is the content of chapter 3 of this book is there we have elaborately discussed that in one on a, one of the principles in chapter number 1 and that is why we are skipping that chapter ok. So, today we will discuss chapter 4 of the book chapter 4 chapter 4 title of this uh, chapter is market forces market forces of demand and supply demand and supply this is the uh, title of this chapter ok. So, as, as from the title you can you can have an understanding that we are going to discuss now what is demand, what is supply, what is market all those things quite exhaustively quite elaborately ok. So, first what is market? Uh, we have defined market so many times in 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 this uh, in the earlier lectures still let me remind you what is market market is an organization where customers and sellers interact with goods and services okay they exchange goods and services through this platform okay that platform is called market okay that is market and then demand and supply okay so in a, in any market uh, there are certain commodities or certain uh, services uh, are, are uh, supplier of those are there which are the sellers okay. they are bringing those commodities or those services to sell to potential customers okay. and buyers or customers also come there uh, attend the market okay, reach the market to purchase those commodities and services right. So, that is why in the market it is a platform where these two group of individuals ones are called say buyers another are called sellers and they are interacting each other with the, with a particular commodity or a group of commodities or a services or so many services right. So, now so what is demand see in when we are telling demand some sort of common sense or some sort of uh, prior notion is immediately coming to your mind as if the demand is uh, my demand or your demand for a particular commodity say bread. My demand is bread is as if the, the, the notion is coming to your mind as if it is my desire to get bread. Yes, it is my desire or it someone's demand is basically his or her desire to get that commodity, but in economics by demand we do not uh, simply refer the desire rather something else desire but that desire should be backed by the purchasing power supported by the purchasing power. Say I may I may have a desire to get say it is a big palatial kind, kind of building right, but I may not have that much money to purchase that building uh, whatever price it has ok. So, effectively I am not generating any demand for that building. So, only when whatever price of that building is uh, if enough amount of money I have in my pocket uh, 
So, I am capable to purchase that from the market, then if I desire to get that building, it will be called demand. So, let me repeat in economics by demand we refer desire to get something, but backed by the purchasing power. Okay? So, that, that is the demand. Now, we are coming to the supply exactly the same way supply what is supply? Supply is that who are the producer, who are the potential sellers, they uh, bring certain goods and services in the market okay? with, the, with the expectation that we, with the, with the uh, uh, okay, yes with the expectation that they will be able to sell or they will be able to find some customers for their product. Okay. So, wh what is supply in economics? Exactly the same thing, your desire or someone's desire to deliver a product, but that desire should be backed by his or her capacity. Okay. So, suppose I am a producer, I am producing uh, say rice, I, I am a farmer, I am producing rice okay. and uh, you know that for any production activities or even to produce my rice, I have to hire certain factors of production. So, I have to pay that factors of production. Okay. So, I, I have to incur some cost of production, this cost of production is basically uh, cost of factors of production whatever I hired against their services, I, I, I must pay something, I, I must pay something to the land I hired, I must pay something to the labor I hired, uh, similarly capital I hired and all. Right. So, some of these total payments are called my total cost. Right. So, now suppose uh, uh, to, to produce uh, 1 kg of rice, I, I incur say 20 rupees of total cost. Right. Now, suppose market price is say 15 rupees per kg of that rice. Okay. So, although I am willing to sell that product in the market, but I will not be able to sell at the market existing prices 15 rupees per, per kg. Right, because if I if I sell that I have to incur some loss, right? So in this particular case, although I have a desire to deliver that product in the market, that is not uh, my supply because my desire is not backed by my capacity. The kind of cost of production I incur in the existing market, I will not be able to deliver that product. Okay? So let me repeat again: uh, demand is desire to get something but supported by the purchasing power, supporting by the capacity to purchase that exactly the same way supply is the desire to deliver some product, but supported by the capacity to deliver that at the existing market market prices. Okay? So, these are the two definitions of demand and supply. Now, there is if say suppose uh, there is a commodity right say okay let us let us take an invisible or uh, indivisible commodity like say some liquid commodity say milk suppose milk you know that it is uh, indivisible kind of thing right uh, commodity right suppose uh, for me as a potential customer of milk uh, my alternative amount of quantity demanded of course how much milk i will or how much quantity of milk I will uh, willing to purchase that depends on what is the price of milk. Of course, beyond price of milk there, may, there are so many other factors that determine my uh, quantity demanded of milk, but in this particular case price is the most important factor. Okay? So, suppose my demand schedule is like this say quantity and this is the price, price is price say per liter L I T R E per liter. right? So, when uh, price per liter is 200 rupee, this is in rupees, in rupees terms. Okay. When it is 200 rupees per liter milk, yes in the real life, no, in India uh, price is not so that much expensive, but suppose let us, uh, let us starting with, let us uh, start with that kind of high, very high possible price. So, when 200 rupee per liter of milk, that is the price in the market, perhaps I will not demand anything. Okay. When it is 150 rupees, again I will not demand anything because I am not willing to purchase milk at that much high uh, prices. Okay. When it is 100 rupees, also still I will not uh, demand anything. Suppose when it is say 90 rupees, perhaps I will demand for 1 liter. If it is say 80 rupees, I will demand for 2 liter. Similarly, 70 rupees, I will 
demand for say 3 liter and so on. Okay. In that way, when it is 10 rupee, okay, I will demand for 2 liter like that. Okay. So, this kind of uh, tabular uh, tabulated figures, wh what is this side left hand side, what is that? Alternative amount of quantity demanded of that particular product, milk. Okay. At various alternative possible prices in the market. Okay. When it is 200 uh, rupees 200 per liter, I will not uh, my quantity demanded for milk will be 0, generate any demand for that commodity. 150 rupee again 0, 100 rupee still 0, 90 rupee perhaps 1 liter, 80 rupee 2 liter and so on. So, this kind of tabulated quantity demanded vis a vis price this kind of scenario is called demand schedule demand schedule is. So, this is demand schedule for whom? One individual customers, this is demand schedule for me okay. and when these figures we plot in a diagram that is called demand curve. So, in economics usually we draw this kind of demand curve. So, you can understand the kind of kind of numbers we have taken that in quantity demanded column and in price column. So, from those numbers we are getting a sense that perhaps my demand or my quantity demanded or milk at alternative possible prices, it is perhaps first as price is falling my quantity demanded is increasing right. Look at here price becomes 90 to 80 my quantity demanded is increasing from 1 to 2 liter. 80 to 70 it is 2 to 3 liter and so on. So, price is falling my, my quantity demanded is increasing right that is the law of demand I am coming to the law of demand okay. that is the common sense all of us have the way we behave in any market one commodity is there I am going I am a potential customer of that commodity perhaps when price will increase under the set of this previous condition given all other factors unchanged when price will increase I will try to consume less and vice versa right. So, if so that this demand schedule this uh, pair of two figures if we plot in a diagram whatever uh, that relationship will be shown by a line it may be straight line it may be a, not a straight line, but it will be a downward sloping line for sure the kind of uh, relationship we are getting as price is falling demand quantity demanded is increasing. So, if we measure quantity demanded q in the horizontal axis and price in the vertical axis right. So, perhaps we will get this kind of one line ok. It may be straight line here the numbers we have taken it is indirectly telling that we have taken a straight line ok a straight line kind of demand curve and perhaps this is the 100 look at here price 100 rupee ok. So, above this 100 whatever possible price is there my quantity demanded is 0 only ok at the 100 rupee price still it is 0. Now, suppose this is 90, this is 80, this is 70 and so on and it is increasing. Okay. When it is 90, then time this is 1 unit, when it is 80, this is 2 unit, when it is 70, this is 3 unit and so on. Okay. So, in that way we are getting a demand curve downward sloping, okay. it may be straight line, it may not be straight line. Okay. Let me clarify one thing. Okay. So, so, what is the law of demand? Law of demand is basically its target is to capture people's individual or potential customers behavior in a market of that product ok, vis a vis the price of that product what is existing in the market ok. So, that through law of demand we try to capture that relationship that behavior of a customer ok. What is the law of demand? Law of demand tells that under the set of this previous condition in other words given all other things unchanged if price of a commodity increases its quantity demanded by a customer will fall and vice versa ok. Vice versa means what if price falls quantity demanded will increase ok. So, that is the things law of demand. So, under the set of this previous condition given all other things unchanged. So, how, what are those all other factors we are coming to that one by one ok. Just one clarification here say so, suppose ok let us let us go to the uh, next slide and we will play a 
demand curve we will draw ok. So, we are measuring quantity here, we are measuring price here and suppose we have this kind of demand curve ok. So, look at here first there is a contradiction here the way we are drawing this demand curve ok. Let me let me just uh, hint you or uh, put uh, more emphasis here. Look at how you are uh, telling this behavior through law of demand. We are telling that if price increases quantity demanded will fall and vice versa. So, the way we are telling as if price is the determining factors uh, factor here and quantity demanded is the determined factor. No? If price moves one direction, quantity demanded will move the opposite direction. In that way, we are telling. So, price is a causal variable and quantity demanded is the caused variable here. Okay. It is the convention that any causal variable we usually refer when we plot them in the diagram. Say, suppose I have one uh, caused variable y and one causal variable or sometimes it is called explanatory variable, explained variable. Okay. X is causal variable and Y is caused variable. So, X is causing and Y that cause is reflected in Y in that way. So, if I have a Y variable which is caused variable and X is the causal variable which is causing the fact. Okay. So, that usually we refer y equals to f x kind through f x kind this kind of relationship right. And when we plot that usually that caused variable we measure in the vertical axis and causal variable usually we measure in the horizontal axis right. Look at here when we are trying to capture law of demand through a demand curve we are here doing just the opposite right. Because the way we told let me repeat again the law of demand if price moves certain direction quantity demanded will move the other opposite direction in that way we are telling. So, in a sense we are alternatively we are telling that here price is the causal variable and uh, quantity demanded the cost variable. So, then why we are for the demand curve we are uh, not following the convention uh, because here actually the, there is a British mathematician called Alfred Marshall. Alfred F R E D Alfred Marshall. He is a British mathematician who has uh, done lot of works in uh, theory of demand and all. Okay. So, actually he first draw this kind of it is not a mistake rather non conventional way demand curve. So, we are following that to honor him okay. although it is just the opposite of the convention. Okay. And that is why in uh, higher order uh, advanced level economic, uh, economics textbook you will see that this kind of uh, curve where we are trying to capture this demand behavior through price quantity mechanism of one axis uh, we are measuring quantity demanded another axis we are measuring price and, and through uh, within that framework we are trying to capture quantity demanded price behavior of a customer in a market. Okay the curve what we will get if we measure price in the vertical axis and quantity in the horizontal axis usually this kind of curve is called inverse demand curve. More specifically this curve should be called inverse demand curve okay, which we follow in the advanced economic, economics textbook. But for this as you know our this course is very preliminary level economics text and that is why throughout this course we will refer this as demand curve although we will measure price in the vertical axis and quantity in the horizontal axis. Okay. Now, say suppose this is our demand curve. Okay. Now, the question is what are the other factors that can influence this demand. Okay. So, obviously other factors one of them is my income or the person for whom this is the demand curve his or her income level. So, other factors or factors that determine demand are of course, this is the this is the quantity we are measuring in the horizontal axis, quantity of that commodity and price in the measure we are measuring in the vertical axis price of that commodity right. Now, what other factors can influence the demand for that commodity ok. Of course, income of the consumer or whose demand behavior we are trying to capture here, his or her income 
Okay. Any other thing? Definitely price of price of related goods, related commodities or related goods or related service, if it is a service, this demand curve, if it is a for a service, so price of the other related services. Okay, that also determine because look at here we are we are coming one by one of each of these factors. Okay, anything else? Of course, expectation of the about the future. Okay, expectation about the future. Expectation about the future. Okay, anything else? Of course, taste and preference taste and preference of that consumer and so on right these are the factors why and how they affect ok look so when we told that uh, law of demand we mentioned that under the satiris peribas condition given all other things unchanged right so given all other things unchanged means this sort of four factors we mentioned here there may be lot of other factors the surroundings within which the consumer belongs and so many other factors also may affect right so we have exclusively mentioned here four factors these four factors or any other factors what can we, we what we can think of that can have an implication of my quantity demanded of a particular commodity right we have to keep all other things unchanged all those factors including those four and beyond this for whatever else can have an influence on my quantity demanded of a product keeping all those things at some given level if price of that commodity increases i will try to consume less and vice versa that is the law of demand right now the question is suppose all other things kept are kept unchanged but income is actually uh, earlier my income was 100 rupees per day now becomes say uh, 200 rupees per day my income becomes double so, whatever what will be the relationship between quantity demanded and price of that commodity? Definitely, perhaps I will have this kind of one uh, shifted demand curve. So, initial demand curve was a b, later demand curve perhaps it was a prime b prime. Okay, one shifted demand curve, outward shifted demand curve. Why outward shifted demand curve? Look, okay. So, this demand curve a b demand curve is telling that when price was that level I was trying to consume this much right. Now, my income level have increased right. So, definitely I have more purchasing power now right. So, at the same price perhaps I will try to consume little bit more now ok that is why. Let me clarify one thing here ok when we are drawing any curve like this demand curve we are exclusively measuring two variables in the two axis in this particular case quantity demanded in the horizontal axis we are measuring price of that commodity we are measuring in the vertical axis. If any factor that can have influence on quantity demanded other than price and if something change happens in those factors other than price your demand curve will shift its position from one, one position to another like a b from a b to a prime b prime. Okay. Look at here what factor it is changing now income, income is changing then after at the changed income level what is the relationship between still that price quantity of the same commodity okay. what is my behavior regarding those two variables if income changes if suppose my income falls perhaps my demand curve will shift inward this way right. So, exactly the same way price of other related commodities, expectation about the future and all other things, all other factors what influence the demand or quantity demanded right. So, if something happens or some change happens on those factors or any of those factors, my demand curve should shift from one place to another. Let me clarify this shift may not be always parallel ok, may be my initial demand curve is this, later demand curve is this kind ok, it can also happen. It, it not necessarily that demand curve will be uh, always parallel the way I draw here I have drawn here right. I have drawn that, but that is not the only possibilities it can uh, shift uh, anyway depending on the circumstances depend, depending on the which of those other factors are changing how that how that factor is changing and so on ok. So, just you you, you know that uh, there is no that it is not necessarily the case that your demand curve will shift always parallelly. Okay. okay. So, then say price of related commodity how that will influence 
okay say suppose keeping all other things unchanged say suppose this commodity is say say t okay and there is another commodity t we are talking about this commodity is t there is another commodity coffee which is close related closely related to t all of you know that it is a substitute commodity to t right so if t price increases tomorrow you know this is our demand for t we are discussing so suppose coffee price falls way below than the current price level okay today coffee price say 10 rupee per say 1 gram tomorrow it becomes say 2 rupee per 1 gram suppose okay then what will happen without making any other change under the settlers paribas condition whatever the t price the commodity whose demand curve we are discussing here that price remains the same income level remains same expectation about future same all other things are remain same then what will happen perhaps i will try to consume less amount of tea and more amount of coffee because coffee becomes now cheaper okay way cheaper than what is coffee how coffee expensive today right so since tea and coffee are closely related com commodities and those are substitute commodities okay so i can quickly switch from tea to coffee because coffee becomes way cheaper now okay so in this way prices of the related commodities also have an implication on my quantity demand then how expectation of about the future so suppose uh, today so this commodity suppose say it is tea okay again it is t okay so uh, this year suppose uh, climatic condition was very favorable for the tea plantation okay and we are expecting that that uh, tea production this year at the end of this year will be huge so i am expecting that tomorrow when production will be huge no perhaps we are expecting that price will be little bit less right so in a in a long scale perhaps i will try to uh, purchase as little bit more in the next year so today i am trying to you see when we are purchasing tea no i am not purchasing every day tea from the market today i am purchasing perhaps it will last for next one month and then after one month one it is finished then i will go to purchase again right so in that way if i expect that next month okay next month tea price will increase fall quite significantly so i will try to perhaps purchase very less amount of tea this month okay because i am expecting that something will happen to the price of this commodity tomorrow or the next next period right so that is the thing taste and preference also in that way have an influence of uh, on the quantity demanded of of any product right because say, suppose suppose uh, some commodity i don't want to um, uh, consume at all i don't like that commodity okay so that will have some kind of implication vis a vis i like very much one commodity it will have say suppose uh, there is a certain commodities uh, which uh, uh, i don't care that how much price uh, whether price increases price falls does not matter i always want to consume that commodity right so then uh, does not matter that what is the price whether price is increasing very much or uh, reducing very much uh, it will not have that much Uh, implication on my quantity demanded right yes the, the relationship negative relationship will still prevail but it will not uh, affect that much right so in that way lot of other factors uh, will influence beyond the uh, price of the that commodity whose quantity demanded we are talking about let me let me clarify here another uh, uh, two concepts change in demand change in demand versus change in quantity demanded demanded look when we are discussing about law of demand we are talking about quantity demanded vis a vis price of a commodity or of a service right but when we are talking about other factors we are telling this under the settlers paribas condition or under all other factors unchanged just one of the other factor other than this price is changing what will happen demand curve will shift right that that shifting of the demand curve is called change in demand okay so enter demand your demand your desire to get that 
commodity of course backed by or supported by your purchasing power that thing changes. So, when we say suppose in a diagrammatical framework when your initial demand curve was say a B kind of thing and later demand curve suppose say C D kind of thing this movement A B to C D that movement we will call change in demand. And suppose you were on the point E of the a, a B demand curve and due to the price of that commodity falls you moves from E to F point along the A B demand curve. So, this, this phenomenon is referred as change in quantity demanded. So, let me repeat change in quantity demanded is basically referred your movement along a given demand curve and change in demand it is basically the shifting of the entire demand curve. 